Coach Prime is presented by Chevy Silverado. We're ready! We're ready! We're ready! That's a go! That's a go! That's a go! You know, it's hard to believe he's a, he's a freshman. You know, he's, he's definitely stepped his game up. Coming off the 61-point explosion against Alabama A&M, their best output in 20 years, the Tigers' offense is finally starting to click. The catalyst for that revival, freshman signal caller, my nephew, Shadir Sanders, baby. Shador is, uh, nickname grown, that's who he is. Shador is our leader. Shador is our, our guy. He got want to, he got that want to in him. He's just one of them guys that go keep trying to go, 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 go until he gets it. Just the knowledge that, and the love that he has for the game. Um, you even see him coming early, uh, staying late. Watching film, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of his body, doing the little things uh, that you wouldn't normally see a freshman know how to do at this age. He's unflappable. He rocks steady, doesn't flinch, doesn't get nervous, doesn't get too high or too low. People want to play with him, and they don't want to disappoint him. On an offensive standpoint, I know a lot of players came because they got a guy back there that's going to throw it. That just shows me they trusted me a lot to put their actual career on the line to come play with me, so. I appreciate it. Shadur always puts me in, I feel like, good positions as far as, you know, keeping me up with what he sees out there from the defense. I'm very thankful for the, you know, grown as you can call it. Hey, it's, it's Bama. All it is, outside, M-O-R. Slot, got a pick for number three, and then you whip him back out. Number three is going straight to flat. Incredible talent. Shador could play anywhere in America. He's playing for his dad at Jackson State. One thing about me, I didn't care about the name of the school. I didn't care about any of that. I just like the opportunity here. I like the coaching staff. I like everything like that. And it just fit. Great arm. I mean, for a young guy, I've been around a lot of quarterbacks. His touch. That's a go. What a fucking ball. The deep ball. I like that. How he can throw it in seams, step up, incredible. And I'm not just saying it because it's my boss's kid. He's damn good. Hey, same situation, 30. Hey, 99! Good job. <laughs> well, he gets on my guys, he tells guys, he tells the receivers, hey, do this here, or he'll tell my guys, come on, firm up, we've got to be better. They're, you're, they're in my face. I mean, so he's talking to him at a young age, and I hear him. We got to pick it up, bro. This is mid, bro. I ain't going to count. Like, we're not going to be able to put up hella points how we supposed to, bro. Like, I don't feel comfortable in the pocket at all, line. I ain't going to lie to you. When I don't feel comfortable, I can't make throws like that. I need to feel comfortable in the pocket. We just got to step it up, bro. And let's just finish the rest of practice. Let's go. Finish on me. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. Well, it's a lot on his shoulders. I'll be honest with you. Shador has uh, really put a lot on his shoulders. Um, the expectation coming here being the highest rated recruit to ever signed with Jackson State. And, uh, you know, the fact that he's um, Coach Prime's son. My dad's expectations, I played with him in high school with that <laughs> before he got here. So to me, the expectation's been the same. Like, a lot of people don't understand he was a Hall of Famer. So his regular expectations is going to be great. Run the play, run the play. Hey, the execution better be clean right here then. Let's go. Oh, shit. Good deal. That was a good play. Hey, come here. Come here. That's just flat out stupid. That's stupid on the first darn play. Come here. You got first to 10. You throw the darn ball away. You know, he's going through some growing pains, too. Sometimes they try to do too much. Hey, I'm supposed to throw it here. I'm taking a little bit of time, and I get sacked. Or I'm supposed to do this, but I choose to do this. You got, you're going to have more time than you think coming back to this. Okay. Getting back to the slant. So you can be able to go one. All right, nope. Now I'm here. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right, Ben. Coach Prime and uh, Shador hit me up. Um, I trained Shador. I've been training him for about two and a half years now. When I was playing ball, he used to come down to Houston and work out with me a little bit because I played with his brother, Dion. So we kind of was doing some training when he was a little younger. So it's been growing for about five, six years. Hurry! That's you. Transfer your weight. I shouldn't be throwing and coming back here. Transfer my weight towards my toy. Yes, you go. Quick. Better. Keep my weight centered. Everything I should be doing, I should really be almost leaning forward. Not leaning forward, but no, not leaning. I've been a robot. Golly. 
It's a lot of playmakers, Keith, uh, Lotto, Mal, uh, Warren, a lot of different guys that can make some plays. What I was telling Shador about was just being able to make sure you do a good job of getting the ball in their hands when the opportunity presents itself. You know, not overthinking anything, but just trusting what they're doing. They're going to do their job. You just got to make sure you do your job. That's it, go. That's it. That's it. Now you get it. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to get to the point. Stop reading the routes. Find the person. Find the read. Read him. And one thing that a lot of people forget is he's still a freshman. Right, he's, he's still a true freshman, he's not a red shirt freshman. There's a difference in between that. So he's learning as much, he's learning as much as everybody else, right? He, this is moving very fast for him, but I feel like he's handled it, man, tremendously. Especially being a 19-year-old quarterback, he's handled it tremendously. Shador off the field, I think he's just getting started. I think uh, his, his likability, his look, his, his swag, his, his whole countenance is very attractive to sponsors. Right now we're heading to the stadium for a shoot. Uh, you know, I got another NIL deal and we're really excited for it. Now we just gotta film it. I'm really blessed to be able to receive NIL deals, but I don't let that be a distraction of what I got to do on the field. Your production on the field stop, NIL deals stop. On the field, I just got to continue just uh, balling and just being successful. And there's no greater model for success as a quarterback than Tom Brady. Last June, Shador received priceless training from the future first ballot Hall of Fame. The training with Tom Brady was different. It was just somebody. I looked up to the GOAT, the greatest. Being able to work with him in real life and seeing him throw, seeing the ball jump out of his hands, seeing his routine, his warm up, just talking to him, and just seeing how genuine he was. And like, he's a normal person, he's a human. And a lot of people don't understand that. Just for him to meet Tom Brady, for Tom to accept him and embrace him and say, hey man, come on down here, let's work. And the little nuances that he counseled Shador on was unbelievable. I was just a dad just sitting on the side saying, hey, you go, do your thing. I ain't got nothing for you. That was unbelievable and that was grand and took Shador to another level. It truly did. The kid has something special. I'm proud of him. I really am. Coming to HBCU, coming here, it's time and it's moment. It's just something that just has to be done. The most enduring attraction of Memorial Stadium has been the sonic boom. Jackson State's famed marching band, the boom has played at the NAACP Image Awards, NFL Games, and the 2021 Presidential Inauguration. All people, no matter race, creed, or background, we are all America united. Jackson State University salutes the USA. The sonic boom was led by Dr. Roderick Little, a Jackson State alum, and one of the youngest band directors in school history. Little oversees an intense regimen where the band trains 25 to 30 hours a week. The sonic boom of the South is the largest student organization here on campus at Jackson State University. It also serves as a major public relations unit for Jackson State University as well. Primarily, the sonic boom of the South is a microcosm of energy of musical pageantry, showmanship, um, everything that you look for to be entertained, that's the sonic boom of the South. We got a lot of work to do. It's been an exhausting season just because it almost feels like we've been playing since January, but literally we play like three seconds worth of football game. So we gotta focus, we gotta make sure we're doing what we need to do. Keep our hands on straight, make sure you're playing right and all that good stuff. 
The Sonic Boom of the South exudes a certain type of energy that you cannot find in any other band program. The Jackson 5 Drum Major Squad, those are the guys that you see out in the front doing the back bends and the splits and the high marching. And then we have our world-renowned Prince and J-Set dance unit who does a phenomenal job in everything that they do. And of course, we have the band behind that and the WT drum line. Each one of those are small pockets of energy that make up that big sonic boom when you see us marching into the stadium. Of course, the crowd, they latched on to the energy that we exude and also doing some notable national performances, just getting the name of the program out there. And now the sonic boom of the South is a household name, especially amongst HBCU band program. We used to get ready to come out on the field. Mm -hmm. So the boom started playing. It's just chill, bump. Chill. I still get chill every time we come. When we're in the tunnel and you hear the sound of boom walking through the stadium. Yeah, man. I think put chill, bump. Chill every time. When we warm up for halftime, the sonic boom's out there. And that's probably one of my favorite parts of the game. The yeah, state band been around a long time. Uh, the sonic boom is one of the greatest sweat bands ever. Yeah. Football gets a lot of praise in, like, a lot of Power 5 schools and schools across the nation. But here, it's like, the band might, we might be a, a band school, not even a football school. It's something I heard about whenever I got the offer to Jackson State. Was everybody was talking about the bands and things like that. And then you get to that first game and you actually hear the band out there playing. Especially us, because we warm up at halftime and things like that. So we're like out there on the edge of the field where they're on the field performing. I say the sonic boom help amp us up just to um, finish the game strong. Once the band got into it, the players got into it, and everybody else got into it, we took it over. The energy is actually permeating throughout the week. I mean, the students are so excited. The camaraderie amongst athletics and the band, uh, because we're there to provide the support system for the players so they can go on and, and win and, and, and be everything that they know that they are. The halftime, the halftime shows be dope. The Sonic really play that good, but it's like, dude, like we need that all the time. Cause when they do play, you just gotta, you gotta catch the footage. Like we'd be out there bobbing, jumping around, dancing, singing to the music. Cause I used to play saxophone and all that. And I wanted to be in the Sonic Boom for a little while. But uh, I ended up, you know, choosing football. When the band program marches into the stadium and they hear that crowd erupt when our announcer says, Please welcome, it's the award-winning Jackson State University Sonic Boom of the South. Uh, I get chills just talking about it when we enter into that stadium and we see those fans stand on their feet and they're waving those blue and white pom-poms. Those are experiences that you just can't get anywhere else other than the Veterans Memorial State. Let me tell you something. These are my uncles was playing football, basketball, was in the band. Bro, the boom wanted to like, bro, when you graduate, bro, that's when you meet everybody. You can meet people from the 80s that was in the band, bro. Before I even heard the, like, the Jack State football team, though. You heard the you band. Know, I heard the band. Hey, y'all know we number two in the band, like in the nation right now? For real, for real. In the nation now. J A U J A U. Rock the They call me, look at, look how coordinated that is, bro. But watch it, watch it, bro. Watch every step they make. It's gonna be together. And everything like that, bro. No, no cap, this is real. Blow that hoop, blow that hoop, blow that blue. I ain't gonna lie to you. This is different between like PWI and like HBC. It's a difference. Like, bro, this man right here, now this, now this shit is. It's a culture. It's, it's what we are. You know, when you say Jackson State University across this world, they know two things right now. They know Jackson State football, and they know the Sonic Boom of the South. 
And those two things carry us a long ways, man. It makes the university look great, and it makes our alums just walk around with their chest out and their chin up in the air just a little bit higher than what it was prior to. We want Jackson State University to not only be the premier HBCU, but we want Jackson State University to be the premier institution throughout the nation, period. And we have the formula to make that happen. Keeping it tight up in here, man, on a good day, getting ready for a big weekend. That's going to be crazy this weekend, though, man. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be packed. They say it's like over, what, 60,000, 60, 60, tickets sold already? They definitely they ride. Oh, another level, right. But, you know, just being a play, former player, played in it, and now coaching in it, it's crazy. It's it was, surreal. It feel different being uh, a coach versus a player. It's still the same energy, though. You know, just seeing it from a different angles and everything still means a lot to get that win. You know, all the energy is going to be in town this weekend. It's going to be good for Jackson as a whole. I'm looking forward to it as a coach now. So we're going to try to balance that thing out and get it back going in the right direction. As a Jackson State alum, Coach T.C. Taylor is no stranger to the hype and excitement of homecoming week. I mean, it was a shootout. It was probably one of the best games I ever played as a college athlete. Final score is 61-58 against Alabama State. I mean, over 14 catches, I think over 200 yards, about three touchdowns, and it came down to the last play, you know, but a great game, big crowd. I think it was about 60,000 there that evening. So, you know, one of the better memories in my football career. As a senior at Jackson State, Taylor broke the single season record with 84 receptions for 1,234 yards and 11 touchdowns earning Division I AA third team All-American honors. It's all about the work ethic and the passion for it. You know, I love this game. Been playing it since I was knee high to a June bug, man, and I'm still going. But uh, that work ethic and just the grind, the hours, I understand that part about it. So that's why it is what it is now. Coach Tate was an exciting player uh, right here out of Mississippi. During his time, uh, you're talking about 60,000 every weekend. Kind of remind you of the team that we have now with the receiver core we have. I was in high school when he was in college, and I watched him play, so I was very impressionable. I knew his whole story. After switching from quarterback to receiver, I took my work, the work I was putting into a whole new level. Um, that summer, I really grinded it out. And, you know, I didn't, I never played receiver before, so I had to learn how to route, uh, uh, run routes, catch footballs and stuff like that, but it just paid off in the end. That meant a lot to me to watch him go through that as a high school kid watching a college uh, player going through all those transitions and to see him show no ill will towards it, uh, accept it and flourish in it. That was amazing and it, and it did something for me and my character. It taught me a lot. You know, uh, the long week of practice, I like to come in here. Just sit in the chair, get my thoughts together on everything, man. Yeah, she's like my mind. laid back. Right up for the weekend, you know. Think about the game plan, make sure everything's ready to go. Last thing for me to do is get cleaned up, you know. Get that mm -hmm. haircut and be right 10-10 out there come Saturday. Like I always say, when we pulled up, we expected to win. The fans expected it, the band expected it, everybody expected us to win, and it was, we were playing in front of huge crowds. You know, it was nothing like game days here at Jackson State. Or if we was on the road, it didn't matter where we was at. We was playing in front of huge crowds, but the expectation was through the roof. And when we got on the field, we did a lot of special things. So to see him, you know, as, as a player grow into a coach, I had an opportunity to see that. Uh, and when we had an opportunity to come here. Uh, you know, I thought that was really, really good. And, and what he's done in his career uh, for young men, I think he has a passion for those. And, and he trains very well, articulates very well, very detailed guy, very straight up, uh, very honest guy. And that's what you need with these young men today. Yeah, but when you get hands attended, you have a tendency to close your base, and then that's when you end up here. That's what's going to be crazy, the tailgate. So you probably have, what, 60 plus styles in it? In the game, and another what 10 15 in the tailgates? 20. I think you say 20. Easy. <laughs> Easy. We got, for this game. We need them all in the stadium. I'm gonna get them good country folks to come on now. <laughs> <man. laughs> the band and alumni aren't the only ones gearing up for the big weekend. Freshman offensive lineman Rufus Jones and James Reddick can't wait to experience all that homecoming has to offer. George! Big George, how you doing, brother? My name is Rufus Jones, 
R U F U S J O N E S. Man, this is so cool. Boy, I put grease in my head, but it's not finna mess up my way, but <laughs> I'm really hurt right now. My name is James Reddick the second, J A M E S R E D D I C K Sec. Hey. Oh, that ain't funny as hell. I wanna be on the <laughs> Bro, that's why I came to the camp, bro. I already knew Jackson State gonna be live. Oh, every time, boy. Rufus, that's that's my guy. Just simply all around campus, just you know, being us, making people happy, making people smile, and just doing what we do, really. I love it here. The vibe is amazing. You're not gonna play with me today? I'm the undercover boss, undercover CEO of the company. The time management right there was a little low. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say too much. That's not gonna cut it. I'm always gonna be happy. Like, <laughs> I'm at Jackson State. I'm a freshman on the field. I'm winning every day. Like it's like every time y'all see me, it's gonna be a big smile. You feeling hot dogs? Ugh. I'm more of a salad guy myself. <laughs> That's really all I eat is salads. This is a diet cookie, by the way. This is diet. <laughs> this this has no carbs. I'm in the process of losing pounds. Can I have uh, two hot dogs? I'll take one. I'm starting from the wrong side. Rookie mistake. Mm -hmm. It's always front to back in every aspect of life. <laughs> front to back. When I first saw him, you know, when I first got on campus in the summer, I seen how we act and stuff, and it's like, I was like, no, this guy kind of like me. You know, I, I don't really see too many big guys with confidence, but if I ever seen him go up to a female, it's like, he got that swag to him. It's like, I know the swag, because I got the swag. I did want the HBCU experience, because I, I love black women, so. Listen, I got a question. All right, do you have a boyfriend? Oh, Lord, you know, you ever been with a guy that was on TV? <laughs> You know I can make your dreams come true, right? All you gotta do is give me a call. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, man, just another Tuesday driving around and this is nice. Just riding around, you know. It's like it feels like I'm walking down the hall and I'm famous or something. I don't. I don't know you how know, those two got I don't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happened though. And I know what you're saying, man. Now back here with Chevy Silverado, 2021. Hmm. I'm feeling like Prime. This don't truck. It's in its prom. I'm feeling like Coach Prime. I feel like I could cover Anybody. any part of the buffet right now. <laughs> and there's nothing that can be done oh, about it. No, most def. The whole, I can shut down the whole side of a buffet. He did a field, I do a buffet. Okay. Understandable. So, and it's all about the form. I have the form. So, being here mm -hmm. with, with Chevrolet, mm -hmm. knowing I can take down a whole buffet. Imagine driving in a brand new Chevrolet Silverado to Golden Corral. That's beautiful. That's a that, sight I want to see. And that's gonna, and that's what I'm gonna show my true talents. I feel like I could be a Hall of Fame plate cleaner. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Homecoming week at Jackson State is a time where the entire campus comes to life. Students and alumni come together to celebrate the university's rich heritage. One of the highlights is the Greek Step Show a tradition that involves the choreographic creativity of fraternities and sororities as they compete with their feet. When you stop and I Ooh, get you and get you. Street Jam, I ain't never had, like, I grew up in ABCU City, we ain't never had none of that though. What HBCU you was around? Fort Valley State. Oh, for real, they was locked? Yeah, What's up, get fam? Get yeah, I mean, yeah, they get lit. They get lit for sure. Yeah, this Street Jam's not gonna be hard though. <laughs> hey. Look at somebody, hey, like, hey, 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 the festivities get cranked up during Yard Fest, where students, alumni, and the entire community enjoy not an ordinary block party, an HBCU block party, baby. What is that right there? Ooh, what y'all got? The drink, huh? Ooh. All of them. Yeah. I 
I want all of them. I want all of them. That big game with the mm. Delicioso. <laughs> one more, one more, one more. Oh my gosh. This is so good. This is amazing. This all is right. so good. What do you think about it? Let's think I can about just it. drink the whole thing. I can just. Bro, you gotta start with the hand now, nah, bro. That's just... <laughs> this is some good drink. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try? No, not no, a chance. Do you don't have a prayer. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this is all mine. Street Jam Homecoming 2021, we lit. Yeah, it's tradition. Street Jam every year. But like, we usually have it right here or sometimes other places. He getting pired. <laughs> I don't know why, but he getting pired. Yeah. Oh, Man, bro. I know, bro. I'll be back tomorrow like nothing happened. It's not, it's not the same when you're not there. You're in the sideline with your scout be screaming and stuff. Oh, man. I'm going to get my pads right now. <laughs> The ball, bro. Like he locked in. Long as he locked in, we feel good. When two locked in, oh, we feel great. Yeah. When he when he comfortable with the game plan and the route combination, oh, we feel good. Because okay. this is the same toe you had problem with before. Yeah, man. This is my fourth surgery, though. Is it fourth one? Mm -hmm. Fourth surgery. That ain't bad too, boy. From, it hurts. From the, uh, the turf toe problem that you had back in the day? Yeah. You still having the same problem? Yeah. They told me my foot has been dislocated for I don't know how many years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It hurts all day. Really? Don't stop. Wow. It don't stop. Hey, fellas, let's lock in. Let's focus. I want you to enjoy this weekend more than anybody, but I want you to lock in and focus. And let's get the job done in hand. Break it down on my fit. Break it down on my fit. I showed them a tape of uh, Johnny Menzel, Mike Tyson, uh, Lynn Bias, the Hurricanes when they lost to Penn State. I pull out stuff like that because these are all people and teams that never reached their destiny because they lost focus. Tyson lost focus and lost to Buster. They just got to stay focused, man. And it's easy to lose focus. You know, we make a big thing out of homecoming. That's what black folks do. Instead of like, man, hey, this is it. This grass is the reason they came. We can make a big deal out of it. There you go. The alumni. That's right. But y'all got to handle not, this. Y'all, everybody's super. Bad. We got to handle this. Everybody who comes They don't get there yet. They don't get there yet. Renowned chef and former JSU running back, Tobias Dorzen, came back for his first homecoming in 11 years. Dorzen has cooked for luminaries such as LeBron James, Kevin Hart, made appearances on the Food Network, and is the head chef at James Harden's Houston Restaurant 13. Oh, you was you in Chicago because you cook for the ladies. Oh, always. So you, oh, you, you know, know, you know, you, you, know, you, you know. Yo, yo, yeah. You know that. I got you. You know that. Man, I see. Y'all come over, volleyball team, come over. Oh, Lord. You know Coming to Jackson for my visit for the first time, I mean, of course, the first thing they're going to do when they get you off the plane is take you to this amazing stadium right here. For someone that wants to play it in front of that big crowd, who likes the big crowd, um, it's nothing like, you know, seeing this this whole stadium packed out with people. And when we saw the actual stadium, we already had told ourselves that, you know, Jackson was the place to be. But the last time I was here, I put 250 up for homecoming. You put two feet on them. Oh, it's on my page right now. You know, I had to remind people about homecoming, you know, <laughs> Alabama State, you know. One thing Jackson, Mississippi don't play about, they don't play about their football. They they really care about football here. Don't take it for granted, man, because trust me, <laughs> I was here 11 years ago, and I can tell you what we had. You know, I'm so excited just to see tomorrow. It's going to be super exciting to watch, and, you know, I, I plan on seeing them put about 50 points on, you know, State tomorrow. 
This game has been on the map after Alabama State won in the spring in Montgomery, and Jackson State has been waiting for it. It's a beautiful day, though, Coach. A beautiful, not one cloud in the sky, plenty of blue skies, plenty of sunshine for this one. And the most exciting thing about it, Coach, is getting back to how it used to be. And it feels good to see all the alumni and the fans out there supporting. Coach Prime asked for these fans to come out, and they certainly have. This stadium is starting to fill up fast, man. Just, it's exciting down here. It's homecoming. The atmosphere is electric, and the people are still coming in, Rob. Fellas, I'm tired. When you was going to the meets yesterday, I was at the hospital seeing about this crazy foot. I'm tired. As we was getting dressed, I'm sitting up in there fighting for pain to the point that the doctor had to numb my ankle and everything down so I could get up and watch y'all today. I'm tired of people from the outside not believing what's on the inside. I'm tired of us being dysfunctional as a culture, as a people. I'm tired of us jumping outside and doing the petty little stuff, holding, doing the petty little stuff that's just gonna keep us from our destiny. I'm tired of you having all this ability and not displaying it on every single snap. I'm tired of us just not living up to our fullest potential. Fellas, I'm tired, and it's making me weary. I didn't lose my voice from yelling. I lose my voice because it's an attack of the enemy to try to make some of my mobility and my voice because my voice changes things, and I'm tired. I'm gonna continue to fight, though, in my weariness. I'm gonna continue to believe, even though nobody else believes. I'm gonna continue to walk, even if I have to shoot myself up. But each and every one of y'all give me strength, man. Y'all give me purpose. Y'all keep me going. Y'all give me hope. Y'all make me believe. And y'all can do that today because I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm tired. If you don't do nothing else today, give me some strength because I'm tired. JSU will be kicking this ball from left to right. Those chrome helmets shining in this bright sunshine. And we are underway. Here's Shadua now taking the snap. Good protection by the offensive line. Now Shadua fights out of a, a tackle. Shadua still time. Throws towards the end zone. A man open! Oh, it's caught in the back of the end zone! <laughs> My team is for the touchdown! These guys are not better than us! Dominate! Win one play at a time! Let's take this play and win this play and the next play. Let's dominate. For the touchdown. That's Malachi. I'm proud of you, right? Keep going. Keep making you proud. We're not done yet. And they will give it to Santee. Santee off the right side. Touchdown. I need you to buy Santee's moment. I want to after the game. This crowd of over 50,000 has got to be excited about this Jackson State football team. This is gonna be good. You gotta see this. Mama, this is what I want you to do. I'm finna call the team up. Alright? And when I call them up, I want you to walk in and say, Coach Prime, I got a bone to pick with you. Alright? You ain't take care of my baby. And I'm gonna bless him, okay? I want you to say that. I got a bone to pick with you. All right? I want you to. Okay, let's go. <laughs> hey, fellas, fellas. I knew we were going to start out slow because we didn't practice with the Durham during the week. But we came and we finished strong. I care more about finishing than I do about starting. And I'm proud of each and every one of y'all, especially the line. Y'all dug down and you went out and you got that thing. All right? I'm proud of y'all. Okay? What, what you, you got some of them? Coach Prime. Yes. I got a bone to pick with you. Okay, first of all, who, who mom is this? That's Tito. Where's Tito at? That's Tito, man. Tito. Your mama got a bone to pick with me? That's 38. What you talking about? Coach got, Prime, you ain't been taking care of my baby. So I ain't been taking care of your baby? No. I ain't been taking care of you, baby. 
problem. It's a problem because mama say, and I don't like having problems with mama. So you know what I'm going to do? What? Full scholarship. <laughs> Just like that, go hard like that, and come through adversity. He's come through. Never complain, never gets upset. Every carry he gets, he hits it and tries his best. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, and you know how I feel about you. Yeah, I love you, all right? I love you too, Cole. Right. We got Dolph in the house. We got Dolph in the house. Y'all killed this shit. Which, which, which one of your songs you want us to rock to right now? Whatever they want to rock to, man. Give me a dope. I need, I need a young dope. I appreciate you, man. They stopped me in the airport, had too many binges on me. They don't want you to live. They don't want you to bow. Them push a smile in your face. Yeah, then they pray for you to fall. Hey, young niggas, stay focused. But I really want to crash. Think about where you at. Then think about your past. on the next episode of Coach Prime. Lauren was changing my bandages daily on my foot, and she said, Coach, uh, your toes are black. Upon going to the hospital, we found out some really, 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 really severe things. It's safe to say he's gonna be with us for a few days. A lot is still to be determined, but he's gonna have a procedure done a little later today. Uh, you can lose your leg.